Hello and welcome back and today I've got with me the wonderful Judy Fenton. Now Judy lives in Shrewsbury and she's a Reiki master and she's a crystal healer as well. She's also um, studying Chakra Ascension with the, the wonderful Alan and Robert through in Shrewsbury and Judy is also in corporate sound healing within her healing modalities. So Hello, Judy, and welcome to uh, Talking Your Walk. And can I ask you, Judy, did you always come from Shrewsbury? Were you born in Shrewsbury or were you born elsewhere? I was born and bred in, sorry, born in Cardiff. Oh, Cardiff? Yeah. Oh, okay, so, so how did you get to Shrewsbury? <laughs> oh, well, see, this is the long, complicated one. Well, it's not really, but... Um, uh, I joined the Air Force and I've moved around quite a bit. You were in the Air Force? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, I was a medic. Wow! Flight nursing attendant. Okay, so, so you were brought up in Cardiff. Did you go to school in Cardiff? I did, yes. Unfortunately, I went to Roman Catholic schools. And how did... Um, what, what kind of child were you? Were, were you academic or were you more creative or a mixture of both? Or... Um, I, I wasn't particularly good in anything, to be honest with you. Um, I struggled with most things. Um, and I've, um, didn't do very well, um, being in, in school settings. Um, okay. and I think if I look back now, because I, I work with learning difficulties, there's a, I do have a, a, a touch of ADH, so I can't concentrate on the same level that anybody else and I don't take in information the same way that anybody else does so it takes me a little bit longer to actually get to understand so um, then I was classed as unteachable um, and academically very poor wow mm. so, so that must have been crushing for your confidence totally yeah that's awful yeah. So, so you you left school, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Then why the RAF and and how did you cope with the changes that that required joining? You know, a a, a, a sort of military. Yeah. Um, sort of environment. How how and and very strict as well. I would imagine in the the well, discipline. I, I my mother was disabled. So I looked after my mother and um, when I was nine, I didn't join the Air Force until I was 19 because the jobs that I was doing, because um, my dad used to work nights, so he'd be there during the day and then I'd be there in the evenings to look after my mum. But it was, it was just a, a thing that I, I was in town one day um, in Cardiff Centre and I went in to join the army actually. But the, the people, because I didn't think I was good enough to join the Air Force. Um, so um, they, the, the Air Force came over to me first and we had a chat, etc. cetera. Um, originally, I joined as stewardess. So I was accepted because my background with the family is all in the catering. So we were brought up in a pub, you know, and we moved around in different settings like that. Um, and, um, I wanted to get away because a lot of the people in the family were alcoholics, um, and I didn't want to go down that route. So, um, the Air Force took me away from that, um, but I still retained my, um, attachment to my mother. Um, she had that much of a hold. Um, and then when I got married and had a, a child, uh, the Air Force agreed to have them, my mum and dad, come to live with me because by then my dad was becoming disabled as well. So he couldn't fully look after her. And six months after she came to live with us, she died. Wow. So, um, on a, you know, when you're in the Air Force and you get pregnant, in those days, you had no choice. You were given two options leave or abort that was it that was the only option Whoa, yeah that's horrendous 
but we're going back to the early 80s because I left in, my son was born in 81, so I left in uh, April 81. Um, yeah, it, and it was, but I was, we were all stationed up, up at Broadie, West Wales, it's not there anymore. And there was an American base there as well. Um, and the American uh, lady, um, we both got the same news the same day, and she was told, she was asked, do you want us to provide you with a nanny but you have to stay on for X amount. And I was given two options, leave or abort. Those were the only options we were given. So I was a bit miffed because I did enjoy it, but you know, um, and so um, I felt better because I'd done something that nobody else in the family had done. And my dad was proud because he was in the Air Force during the war. Okay. Um, so, um, and then, um, unfortunately moved around quite a bit with the Air Force, um, returned back to Lynham. Um, I rejoined as a medic, flight nursing attendant on a part-time basis, like TA. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, um, they were set up because of the Falklands because they didn't have enough medical staff on the ground. Um, and thankfully I passed some of them, but I would never get my, my corporal because I couldn't do maths. I could not pass the maths. It, may, it must have been a boost for your confidence even to get into the RAF. Absolutely. I would imagine, you know, after having that confidence sort of destroyed at school, um, and then having the, the awful it choice. Wasn't just at school, though. It wasn't just at school. It wasn't. But, no, my sister used to say that I was thick and I would never amount to anything. Oh, it's horrible. Ooh, awful, yeah. awful. Absolutely horrendous, Judy. So, you know, getting the job in the RAF the first time, even though they gave you a horrendous, you know, option. Yeah, at, yeah. At the end, um, I mean, that must have done a little bit. And recognising that, you know, getting away from the family you know, that takes a level of maturity when you're a young woman to, to sort of recognise, look, if I stay where I am with the, the family that I've got, the chance of me becoming an alcoholic is quite real. So so that takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength, doesn't it, to say, no, I'm, I'm not going to be on that uh, path, I'm, I'm, I'm changing direction. Yeah. And good on you for doing that. So when you get to um the RAF and then giving that decision then back to the RAF so did you have to go to the Falklands no um I did go to the Ascension Islands to bring some patients back um but um the Falklands crisis had eased by then um my then husband had gone to the Falklands crisis and in between my mother had died so um and he wasn't allowed to come back but when he did come back he was completely different person completely mm -hmm. different um but when i went to the ascension islands um oh my god i was so lucky i was i i've i really feel blessed because i was allowed i went off to the beach at night midnight um with a full moon and i was really really blessed to be able to see the turtles coming in, laying their oh, eggs. Wow. So a lot of the times that, you know, I've had bad, I've also had amazing things too. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's never all been all bad. I've had yeah. some fabulous, fabulous things happen. And well. you had your son as well. Yeah. yeah. So, so coming, coming a bit forward then, and then coming, you know, after the Ascension Isles, coming oh. back to the UK, did yeah. you stay in the, the RAF or how, what happened then? Did you change again or? Well, my then husband gave me an ultimatum because he was still in the Air Force and he was flying off and it was a case of if he was there, I wasn't, if I wasn't, he was. Okay. Um, but that didn't stop me being a good mother. But he gave me an ultimatum. I either gave up, gave it up, or we parted. So I gave it up, um, and six months later we parted anyway. Wow. Mm. 
And the sad thing to that was I'd had a breakdown, obviously, you know, uh, lots of different things going on. And I was taken into hospital. So he got custody. And he made it very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. Um, and obviously I was then left homeless because I didn't have a, my child. And um, so I had to get out of Air Force quarters. Um, and I ended up in a tiny little room um, having to work in this hotel um, to keep a roof over my head so that I had somewhere to take him. So that I had to go back to Cardiff because Chippenham wouldn't have me because they, had, they sent you, in those days, you had to go back to the place that you were born and they wouldn't have me. So it was a case of you kind of, um, it's kind of lost, you know, when you think your whole world, you've lost your child. You've lost your home, you've lost everything, you know, and it's, um, and then you had to go back home. And, and, you know, that's an experience that a lot of people are experiencing at the moment through COVID, isn't it? They're losing maybe their jobs and, and, and potentially losing their homes if they haven't lost them already. I mean, that's a, a horrendous uh, fear, isn't it? I would think within yourself. So then how did you... Cool. So you got the job in the hotel, you can see your son. So so then how did you... I had to travel you... every fortnight. I had to travel from Cardiff every fortnight to Chippenham to go and pick him up. Wow. So, so it wasn't it wasn't just a case of, oh, well, I'll, I'll go and see him. I mean, I rang him every night and um, his new wife didn't like me doing that. Well, you know, I was his mother, tough kind of thing. Um, and there was a lot of hostility on that side. Um, but I worked three to four jobs just to keep a car on the road. Um, Cause in them days you, you know, you, I didn't, I couldn't afford a, a, a new car, you know? Um, then he threatened me with having maintenance. Okay. Um, so I had to go through another court case with, with all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I mean, the bond that I had with my son um, was amazing. Um, but it got destroyed. It did get destroyed. Um, so that was very, very hard. Um, well, so, so Judy, and I know um, you've you've been through all this change. I mean, I, I, how old were you then? Because this seems an awful lot of change for a young woman. Uh, about twenty-four, twenty-five. Wow! My goodness. So. Then what was the next stage? What what happened after that? Um, I re I studied and I retrained, and in those days it was word processors. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody <laughs> who, wants, who wants an explanation, to please get in touch. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> um, and then so I was able to get a job um, in an office type thing. Um, and the boss, when I, when he left, he actually said, do you know why you got the job? And I said, no, he said, cause you told me you could use the paintbrush. Cause at the end of the interview, I just sort of said, I'm very good with a paintbrush as well. Like, you know, <laughs> sometimes I've got away with things with being cheeky. Yeah. I do yeah. have quite a wicked sense of humor. When well, I, I think you would have had to have that, wouldn't yeah. you have to, to, you would need that sort of humor, wouldn't you, to to sort of see you through some of these changes that you've had as well. Um, and, and, and also a really determination, a bit, you know, a bit of grit in there as a person to, to um, come, overcome a lot of these changes. Yeah. So how did you end up in Shrewsbury? Oh, see, uh, I moved quite a bit again. Um, it was... After the divorce was finalised, uh, etc., I was in Cardiff uh, Town Centre. There's a, a particular bookshop, I don't know whether it's there, on the Hayes Bridge, and I just have no idea. I had to go in, and there was something there I had to go and buy. So I did. Um, and that was the start of this journey. And it was my very first start of tarot cards. So can I ask what the book was? 
Can you remember? Tarot cards. It was the tarot cards. And I've still got the original set of tarot cards. It uh -huh. wasn't a book. I thought it was a book I, because it was in a bookshop. And I yeah. went there and um, no, it wasn't. It was a set of tarot cards. So no previous interest in the holistic, the, the psychic, the... I knew things. Yeah, okay. But being a Catholic... Yeah, of course. There was nobody I could talk to. Yeah. Uh, absolutely nobody whatsoever. So, um, and there was, there's always been something in, in me, pushing, always. So it's my, you can call it my soul, my higher being, whatever. Something has always been pushing me. And I used to, I ended up in Bristol <laughs> before I came here. Um, and that's when I was introduced to uh, the spiritual world. Um, and um, I was, went to the Christian spiritualist church there. Um, and for the first time, I felt I was at home. I did not. How old were you then? Um, about 26, 27. Um, and it was kind of really nice. Um, but they helped me to understand um, because I used to think that God was punishing me with all these things that were going on. I was such a bad person because that was the, the way the Catholic had taught you. You fear God. You know, you, you're being going to be punished, etc. So they helped me to understand that it wasn't God punishing me. Um, and um, so I, they actually said that I have uh, an innate healing ability. So I started to study there. Um, but then um, one of the people that was there, they said, uh, you're not going to be here long. I thought, oh, great. Okay. Why? What's going to happen? <laughs> and they said, no, you'll be moving soon. Really? Again? How many more times? Um, and so I read a book and I can't remember um, who the author was. But it was, um, he was um, a healer and his story uh, is quite relevant because he would heal people, um, but uh, he was a uh, psychic surgery. He would do psychic surgery. So the doctor that he had with him would, would work with him and, and do was that. Was that Edgar Casey? I don't know. He lived up in Wales. Oh, okay. No, so no. wherever it was, he, he lived up in Wales. Um, I can't remember the book. You, you, they, I mean, you read so many books now, don't you? That, you know, it's sort of... Um, so um, I, I then sort of joined another group because I'd moved from Cardiff where the first Christian Spiritual Group, then I'd moved to Bristol. Not, um, and again, that was to be nearer to my son from Chippenham and, and what have you. And the boss that had taken me on in Cardiff had moved to Bristol and rang me to say there's a job up here. So I moved again to, to there and it was halfway point as well. So it wasn't so much traveling. And um, um, so I joined different groups there um, where I, I learned or I thought I'd learned some, some things. Um, but the thing that I got guided to do was to go and stand outside a library. Um, because you always got questions inside you when you're learning, you've got questions and you think, Oh, what, what do I need to know? And where do I go? And, and that, so I go to the library and I walk up to a book and I go, you're going to be kidding me, right? Mm, okay. So an example is it was about hypnotism okay fine so i took it home i read about two chapters and i thought what's this got to do with anything but i've noticed over the years that you're guided to something and then you leave it for a little while and then maybe a couple of years later whap that's why you were introduced to it in the first place so i would go to these groups um, and unknowns to me and again because I hadn't been trained properly I had no idea what my capabilities were but other people could see it and 
this is why I'm very, very passionate about learning because I was put on a path that could have done, well, did damage me for quite, a while, quite, quite some time. It's only perhaps the last four years that I started to allow myself to open up again, thanks to Reiki, the Reiki journey. Um, but I became involved with people who I could see that they were having a relationship with other people and they shouldn't have been, well, who knows, but, you know, and they were portraying something else in this persona, you know, we are the light, we are this, but something told me they weren't all that. Um, and I used to get attacked at night. Um, mm. And I've also been attacked by demons because of some because of the psychic, things, yeah, psychic attacks. Yeah, because of I wasn't I wasn't taught how to protect myself or anything. So that kind of scares you quite a lot, and you sort of Ooh, yeah, no, I'm not going there and again. And I moved into this house um, with some people, um, and they they would sit in circles at night um i had an alsatian dog at the time um a rescue dog and he used to go in the in the lit into the kitchen locked in the kitchen and this one particular night he was going absolutely mental mentally bizarre wow. he was oh i mean i think you know what alsatians are like if they want to go or something and um I'm sort of sat there and I'm watching this person change. Now, originally she looked like a, um, a squaw and I thought, oh, wow, that's so beautiful. But then uh, she manifested into something completely, complete. And that's mm -hmm. the reason why he was going the way that he did. So yeah. I've been protected very, very well along my journey. I've just so been very was, uneducated. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing, isn't it? People get into maybe the, the you know, whether it's the Ouija board or whether it's, you know, other psychic uh, phenomenon that they get into. If they're, if they're not trained, it can be very dangerous and, and, and you know, harmful and, and, and you know, it can, it can actually give people problems for years and years and years. So you were lucky to, 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 to sort of break away. So that was another change, wasn't it, that you went through then to, to sort of understand that, no, this is no maybe what I want to be involved in. Yeah. And then you got onto the Reiki. The Reiki didn't come until, I'd been, uh, until I came up here. Ah, okay. Because I completely shut down yeah. anything. I didn't want to know none of it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, but I had, uh, when that was while I was, yeah. And then I, um, somebody came to me and they, they sort of said, um, we, we understand, you know, that you've had a bit of a hard time, but come and sit with us for a while and, and see how you feel with us. Um, and they felt really good. So, um, I started to develop the healing side of it. Um, anything else I wasn't interested in and I'm still not. Yeah, was this a healing group that you yeah. joined then? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. um, and by that time I'm sort of, you know, I'm still a young woman, you know, still have, you know, needs like everybody. And um, so I wanted a companion. Going back to this book that I read, I wanted um, I wanted to try and find this guy. So I got hold of the psychic news, you know, the psychic newspaper. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and again, that was, everything was by chance. Um, and then they, um, when it finally came, there was a like-minded group contact center, you know, so you could write to people. Um, I mean, I met some fabulous people I didn't actually meet, but I contacted people over in America, in London, and all sorts of different things. But um, Shrewsbury is where I chose to be. Oh, that's where they chose me to be. Um, so I contacted the, um, who's my now husband. And um, so I moved up to, to Shrewsbury. Um, 
and I think it was there was a healing group um, that I became involved with but originally they were at the Shire Hall they used to do do meetings up there in the Shire Hall that and Duckers oh gosh um, June, little June Divi. I, I'm terrible with names June yeah. I, I don't think I ever even knew their names and it stopped being there for whatever reason and then it went to the quarter cabins at the Radbrook oh, okay yeah, so they had port cabins up there before, long before the estate agent uh, estates went up there. Um, but I didn't feel it was comfortable. Okay. Um, but what I didn't realise is that I was actually heading for another nervous breakdown. Okay. Um, so just before um, I quit my, I given my notice in, seems to happen regularly. So I'm going to watch that one. Um, and, um, I'd ended up, um, I slipped my wrists and I walked from where I live now into Shrewsbury because there were flooding there and, um, I believed I caused it. Um, so the police found me and ca cornered me. I was actually the English bridge down there, um, up to my waist in water. And so they, um, they were trying to keep me occupied that side, but what I didn't know is they were coming to me behind. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got taken to the police station. And I have to say, I had a horrendous thing there. I mean, I completely went catatonic, so I could hear everything, but I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything, couldn't say anything. Um, but the, the police officers at that particular time were the most nastiest people I have ever met. They mm -hmm. were saying all sorts of different things. Um, Why didn't they take you to a hospital? I mean, it would have been obvious that you would have needed some help. Well, the, I did actually. They were waiting for the psychiatrist, so they called the psychiatrist, um, and so I was then taken off to then Shelton. Okay. Okay. Where I was shadowed for quite some time uh, because of self harm, etc. Um, so um, I had to fight to get out of Shelton, completely and utterly fight. And the thing that makes me laugh is when the psychiatrist used to say, do you hear voices? No. And I thought, if you only knew what. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and so I was, uh, the psychiatrist has said that they, um, they thought I'd gone over from the sanity to insanity. But I can honestly tell you, I've seen that line. I can see this, how easy it is for you to tip that balance. So very, very easy. Um, and I was told that was it. I was finished. So I would never go to work. I would never do anything, et cetera, et cetera. I eventually got out of there um, and felt that I was a problem to everybody. And I was so sorry for this, so sorry for that very guilty for everything um, and then um, me started to take over again so I started to claw my way back out. Um, Was there any tools that you you had to help your people that you had to help you or was this all just something from the strength from within yourself? I've never had any friends um, or people that I call genuine friends. And I used to wonder what was wrong with me that I couldn't have a friendship with someone. Um, but I now understand it's not a case of there's anything wrong with me. It's a case of we learn from people and we move on. And although I do miss companionship sometimes, I'm okay with 
with that and I know that when the next person needs to know something or I need to know something we'll be brought together and then we'll part company again so um, yeah um, so no it's always been me on my own really I think uh, you know for some people as well Judy the life of a healer can be lonely Ooh, yeah. because you give out so much don't you you give you know so much love and compassion and care and things like that and, and you know sometimes a partner or that they don't understand that they don't understand why you want to give so much to other people and and that can prove difficult as well yeah. um in, in relationships so you i think you you've done remarkable to 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 claw your way back really judy i didn't know that and 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 to, to to come back and 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 do the work that you do now because now you teach reiki obviously and and you know as a reiki master so that must have been a great journey for you going on to reiki and get into yeah. you know the, the you know going on to teach it how did that journey well i i sort of you said is was there any tools and i have to go back and because i've just remembered i have to go back and say yes Louise L. Hey, you can heal your life. Yeah. So I would have all the stickers around around the place, you know. And yeah, and this is the book How to Heal yeah. Your Life. Yeah, yeah. by Louise. Hay. Yeah. 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 Um. So you know that was a good help, really. Um. And it helped me to understand a little bit more about things. Um. Now the odd thing is, um, the job that I do. The, they have to have district nurses come in. Um, I went, I started, I went to, um, sorry, i rewind. I went to uh, St. Luke's in town and I used to do healing there for a, for a short time. Um, and I learned the healing federation, etc., etc. However, I don't like rules and regulations like that. I don't think you need a great big journal you know that you have to go through because you're a healer mm. so my answer to them was when you know when it came to taking exams and that i said can i just ask you did jesus ever did anybody ever ask jesus about his qualifications then you know no <laughs> so i'm a rebel <laughs> that's it um, yeah and from there, I heard t people were talking about Reiki, and I went, "Oh, for God's sake, really, Reiki? What, 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 what's so special about Reiki? If you channel from the divine energy, then you're you've, you're healing." So, and then, um, so I sort of said to Spirit, I threw my hands up, and I said, "Right, okay, you want me to learn Reiki? You make sure I learn it." And I'm not paying bucks. I'm not paying lots of money because there's no need to do that. So. Um, went into work on the Saturday she was a Reiki master and she told me about your site Armar Healing I got onto that site saw Alison and on the Wednesday I started learning and oh, that was in 2013 because I just looked it up there uh, that was in 2013 and it was the best journey I have ever taken wow. So you did your Reiki one and your Reiki two, and then went on to do your Reiki master, and 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 you know, um, you you you're working as well. Yeah. I mean that's and you teach you teach Reiki a lot as well in Shrewsbury, which is fantastic. So, you know, you must look back at your life and think, whoa, what a ride. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's no, phenomenal I keep, because keep looking and saying, have, when I get up there, I'm going to have a really good talk with myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you have had so many things happen. You know, the worst of things happen. No, even, you know, glitches like maybe some people might lose a job, and, and, and I'm not taking away for the devastation of people. But to have nervous breakdowns, to be given a choice to either abort, to have a, a, a child, you know, get custody my son, given, my son you know, died. at that time you, you you were going through a difficult mental health problem i mean all of my that son, my son actually died in 2014 oh oh judy that's another 
yep. massive blow for you, wasn't it? Dear yep. goodness. And, and I, I'm, I'm even going to ask you how, how you can cope with that because I know that that must be a horrendous thing and I, um, I wouldn't even begin to understand how that is having no children myself. I wouldn't even begin to understand that, that depth of feeling. But even with that as well, Judy, you have gone on to be a much respected Reiki master in Shrewsbury, you know, um, and I've always seen you as a go-getter, you know, if we've ever met and we're talking and you're talking about things, I would never have thought for a minute that there was ever a period in your life when you didn't feel you had confidence, mm. because you've always, you know, been very strong and very you know, go go get it and and, and um, succeed as yeah. well. So, you know, you must be very proud of your achievements. Absolutely. Totally, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, and you've got every right to be as well, for yeah. sure. Mm. I quite often, I mean, I, I've taken loads of courses because I find that, especially the online ones, I learn at that pace. It's yes. easier for me than going and sitting in a classroom where I feel all, you know. Um, and I've got distinctions all along the wall. And I look at them and I look at, and I think, yeah, and there's somebody who couldn't do anything. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that must give you such a, a little boost and a thrill as well. You know, I love it when people say you can't do it and then that person goes on and not only does it, but... Um, a hell of a lot more on top of that as well, <laughs> you know. Because <laughs> I was back in work at 18, well, within 12 months, I was back at work after that last one. And I wow. thought I would never go there again. <laughs> Three yeah. times in one, in one lifetime is enough. And I've also <laughs> since been told, they will let me go anyway. <laughs> well, that, that's always a good thing. So you still do your tarot cards, do you? Do you still do them? No. No. So, so uh, that, those tarot cards was just a, it was like a, a little thing to start you on this path, do you think? Yeah. Oh, I keep them because they, they mean that much to me. Yeah. yeah. I, um, but I am learning the Akashic Records. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I've got Akashic Realm. Um, I'm studying with a, a lady who developed something called the, the Akashic Round Cards. So it's different to the Akashic Records, but it's within the realm and it guides. So it's it's kind of tarot with a difference. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that sounds great. You know, so, um, well, Judy, all I can say is thank you so much. I mean, thank you for being very honest as well about you know, all of the things that you went through because it's not it's not always easy to reveal that side, you know, and the, the thing is, is so many people have so, you know, such diverse pasts as well. It's not always easy. You will be forced or maybe make changes, you know, voluntary in your life. But, you know, it's, it's also to say is never give up. Yeah. Never follow, follow. You know your intuition. Follow your 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 thoughts, your dreams. Follow that because, you know, it won't let you down if you you follow that intuition. Really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I can't thank you enough for You're being so, so honest with us and uh, I I to learn and understand that, you know, a lot of the time when you go through these things people say to you there's light at the end of the tunnel and in your head you say what do you know how do you know what I'm feeling you have no idea what I'm going through um but I can honestly say yeah I do and yeah I came through that light and because I came through that light my life has changed and you know that's and I'm living proof and that's one of the reasons that I'm probably do what I do is because I, because I think sometimes you go through things in life in order to help people when they go through it so that you do understand. 
Um, you, can, you can walk that mile in their shoes. Yes. Because you've already worn those shoes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Judy. Thank oh, you so much. Thank you. Lovely to see you again. And you know, hope to see you soon. All right, Take my lovely. Care. Take care.